Welcome back. Well, an exhibit at the Whitty Museum highlights the history of Brackenridge Park. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the park has changed through time. Up to 12,000 years ago, people were settling here, meeting here, gathering on the riverside. Um, and people still do today. The latest exhibit at the Whitty Museum dives deep into the history of Brackenridge Park. It's mostly um, from the early 20th century. We can see here the, the bear pit at the zoo, at the bison before um, when they were on the land that is now the golf course. Chief Creative Officer for the Whitty Museum, Beth Stryker, takes us around the exhibit titled Brackenridge, San Antonio's acclaimed urban park based on this book by Lewis F. Fisher. The book is, and the exhibit are both divided into three parts. So the ancient history, the first people, the natural history, the, even the geology of the park, um, and then the shaping of the park and how it was founded, the land transfer from George Brackenridge, and then the modern park, what it is today and where it's going in the future. Artifacts tell the story of the area. But we also have two cases here. Um, one case is a natural history case where you'll see animals and plants that are related to the park. And we have another one with historic items, so um, an ostrich egg from the zoo. The exhibit showcases different images from the past, including this reptile garden at the Whitty Museum in 1937 to back here, this 1948 miniature rail line. But the exhibit also sparks the question, what's next for Brackenridge? This holiday season, explore the diverse layers of the park. The exhibit is open until March. Brackenridge Park is, of course, a treasured part of San Antonio. A lot of families have really intimate connections with the space, um, but it has a really long history. And so both the book and the exhibit dive into that history layer by layer. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. SA Live is spreading some Christmas cheer today, showing us how people around the community are giving back. And there's also some great, they always have great food. They also have some great food on the menu today. Check it out. You ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Are you okay? I'm fine, I'm great. So almost 30 years ago, you started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. Tell me about that experience. Oh, you're, you're, I'm crying. <laughs> A perfectly cooked tamale every time. The thing I love about y'all's recipes is they always, they look great, but you know, you can just spend a little and still get a lot out That's of it. That's right. With freezing temperatures predicted this winter, multiple warming centers will be open to the public. Some of them even allow or to bring pets with kennels they provide. Via bus rides to these centers are free. You can also request a trip through Via Trans. To find a list of all warming centers and numbers to call for Via, visit the web article on KSAT.com. Again, the very cold air not arriving until tomorrow afternoon. Until then, it's going to be 50 degrees this afternoon, and winter officially starts with the solstice at 348. Then tomorrow will warm up briefly to 62 right around lunch, but that's when that front moves through. Temperatures plummet. We'll be in the teens Friday morning, warming to above freezing on Friday during the day, but another hard freeze Saturday and Sunday morning. The good news is sunshine, no ice on the roads, nothing like that. High temperature in the 40s on Saturday. 50s on Christmas Day. We'll be back in the 60s by Monday and Tuesday. Remember those four P's. Prep your house today if you can. People, pets, plants, and pipes. Thank you, Sarah. And as we mentioned earlier in the show, Ukrainian President Zelensky is headed to Washington, D.C. ABC News will have a special report and we'll bring you that live when it happens. Thanks for being with us this noon. SA Live starts right now. life in 2020 and all through the year challenges were faced pressure and fear 
people were nestled snug in their homes, while the SA Live team ensured you were never alone. Mike, Fiona, and team were with us along the way. These diligent elves brought forth a show day after day. So grab some hot cocoa, fill up your cup. This community we love never gives up. Goodness, peace, and prosperity is here. So sit back, relax, as we spread holiday cheer. Fiona, what are you doing? What are you wearing? Uh, you're underdressed. You're overdressed. It's the Christmas show. It's the Christmas show. Huh? Oh, you weren't in the meeting. What meeting? The meeting that you always kind of nap through. Uh, you have a pair of matching jammies in the weather center. Like that? Yes. Let me look. Ooh, I like these jammies. These are nice. Yes, yeah. that looks so much better. Feeling cozy? Yes, mm -hmm. with cookies and hot chocolate and everything. Yes. This is nice. This is how you want to feel all nice and cozy when you open gifts. And we are celebrating with gifts tonight. Lots and lots of gifts. Yes, indeed. It is just like Christmas morning around here. But it is evening. And good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. This is SA Live's Christmas in Prime Time show brought to you by James Avery. And and of course, as Fiona was talking about, it is all about the gifts this year. Those that have been given, those received, and of course, those enjoyed. So we hope this show is a gift to you, all of our KSAT viewers, because you are our gift all year long. It includes an up-close look at the matriarch behind Delia's Tamales, the new spot in town this year that has customers lining up for days. Plus, a trip to Fredericksburg for a holiday recipe that will impress for less than $50. And a mariachi twist on your favorite Christmas carols. The all-female group, Mariachis Las Alteñas, take over Market Square tonight. Now that's a gift for sure. So, to kick off the night, Mike, why don't you open our first gift and see where we're headed? I will. I could open that first gift. <laughs> you know, a lot of folks have had to put off any sort of travel this holiday season, going to Grandma's house, over the river, and through the woods. But we have a gift of lights. Yeah, Fiona, Jen, David, and I went all around San Antonio and surrounding areas to find free light displays, all the beautiful twinkling lights, and support local. to feel festive for free in the new Braunfels area, we are gonna show you some great places to check out the lights. One of the great spots is right here in downtown New Braunfels. We are in the main plaza where, of course, you can see the trees are all lit up. They've got a great gazebo with lights that folks love to take pictures in and a giant Christmas tree and the former Comal Courthouse is also lit up. Another great place to stroll and see some lights is right here in green. There are also those neighborhood gems that truly sparkle over the season. Located at the University of the Incarnate Word from now until January 6th, the Light the Way Christmas Light event is going down from dusk until dawn. You and your family will get to travel in your vehicle around the campus and experience the beauty of one million twinkling Christmas lights in the safety of your own vehicle. Pets are allowed on campus, and don't forget, the little ones love it too. Hi, Daddy. One of the coolest, best things you can do in San Antonio for free this holiday season is to drive through UIW for their Light the Way. It's the 34th annual event that they've had here. But this year, you get to stay in your car, you get to socially distance, have fun, bring the family, and when you're out here walking around, don't forget to bring your mask, and you can enjoy the lights walking around the family. Our little one, he loves it, and we brought our my in-laws out here with us as well. And actually, my wife's filming this, so um, it's a whole family event. They do a great job here every year, and I have to say this year, it just feels extra special. All the twinkling lights, all the colors, when you look off into the distance and you see everything like this, there's really no other experience like this in this area that you can get for free. It's known as the twinkliest town in Texas, and you can see why there's lights all around. 
Lights Spectacular in Johnson City. It's about an hour drive from San Antonio. There's a map available to help guide you through this tiny, twinkly town. It's really cool. Look at me. My recommendation, park. Get off, order food from Pecan Street Brewery when you're about 25 minutes away. Sit outside, enjoy delicious food, maybe a reindeer-inspired beer. The courthouse is gorgeous. Wow, this is an experience. If Johnson City's a bit too far, Bernie always has you covered. Festive decor, free parking, and so many local shops. The icicle lights. Ooh. It's a decades-old tradition. The annual Windcrest Light Up does not disappoint. Residents here go above and beyond, finding their inner Clark Griswold, attracting drive-by spectators from all over. Why is one of our favorites? The best part? You can enjoy it all from the comfort of your vehicle, like my wife Bonnie and I did, and we brought this little furry guy along, too. says you need a radio for Christmas carols. That's very cool. I love this. This year's theme, Let Freedom Ring, a tribute to the military. Families here like the Hamiltons plan for this all year long, knowing living here in Windcrest means they'll have a crowd drive through to enjoy the free light show. Something smells really, really good in here. Yeah. Oh, Dahlia's tamales. This was such a great gift in 2020 for so many, including us. Uh, may I? Oh, okay. You may not know the story behind this remarkable cult following. We decided to send our foodie, David Elder, out there to talk with the matriarch behind those wonderful tamales. Delia's Tamales is a Texas tradition. The massively popular tamal restaurant attracts customers from around the United States, especially during the holidays. This tamal hotspot operates like a well-oiled machine, something that Delia Lubin, the owner and founder, has worked on since the restaurant's humble beginnings. Almost 30 years ago, you started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. Tell me about that experience. Oh, you're, you're I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> first restaurant opened in South McAllen in 1998, Delia made tamales and sold them to neighbors and friends to provide for her family. It was very, my sister and I, she's the one to, to start to teach me to do the tamales. We started with a five pounds of masa and we sell it around the house and the profit that we have is to 250 for each one. The tamales Delia was making outgrew the holiday demand and expanded into a year-round business. Where did the recipe come from? From my mother and her uh, uh, mother-in-law. Oh, wow, okay. And yes. so her mother-in-law? Yes. Oh, wow. Did your mother or your mother's mother-in-law, did they get to see all of this? No. What would you, what do you think your mother would say if she got to see how all this came up like this? I guess she doesn't believe it. <laughs> no, because it was a surprise for me too, the way the people, you know, como te digo, de la manera que, te voy a decir en español, or no, how do you say, the people, the way, um, loves us or hug us, you yeah. know, the, the welcome, you. Yes. Yes. yes, this is the word, yes. embrace us, yes. First Delia's Tamales opened 22 years ago with the help and support of her family. And to Delia, family is everything. I want to say thank you to everybody. I have a family, a very good family, and my employees. Because they're very loyal, very, uh, they take care of the business like uh, they belong to them. And I'm very happy for them and I'm happy because they do their job the way I want it and it's wonderful. But I have to say, the best thing that I can say is thank to all my customers, especially from here from San Antonio. They used to go to the valley, bring it over here, and now I'm here and it's a big surprise for me the way they welcome, they give it to us. And I want to say thank you. 
as of 2020, there are seven locations throughout the great state of Texas. The newest location opened up this year in San Antonio. Each location freshly steams their tamales on site and packages them for hungry customers. This process guarantees a perfectly cooked tamale every time. So when Deli was starting out the business and she was going door to door and there wasn't even a restaurant brick and mortar yet, her daughter, her youngest daughter, would run to each of the buildings and the businesses and sell the tamales. And it was a big part for their family to do on the Fridays and Saturdays to help make some money for the family. And to think that it's transformed from going from that to you don't have to have publicity for something like this and people just wrap around your building all day, every day. I mean, it's a huge accomplishment. Delia, thank you so much for having us out here. If you're looking for the best addition to your table this holiday season, look no further. Delia's tamales, I mean, this is where it's at. You get the salsa, you get the green, you get the red, you get the sweet tamales, you get the Veda Cruz style, which is the first time that I've had here. And you're gonna change the whole dynamic of the evening. People are just gonna be happy and smiling because the food's so good. This is where it's at. I really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy woman and you've brought your family here as well. And they're, they're awesome. They've helped out so much. And um, I look forward to walking out of here with at least three to four dozen, maybe more uh, before. <laughs> and Sam for him too. Yeah, Sam, yeah, Ben gets some too. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you. Keep eating San Antonio. And for SA Live, I'm David Elder. So much family history and passion poured into these tamale recipes. Mm. Did you want one? Well, I guess not anymore. I'm going to have to go get in that long line. Either there or there's so many other places around town. Just go to our website, salive.com, and there's a list of all sorts of places so you can grab these, oh, wonderful Christmas treats for your small family gatherings. These are delicious. <laughs> Still ahead on SA Live, New Orleans roots with a Texas-sized heart. This restaurant owner has big plans to feed dozens of homeless San Antonians despite being 91 years old. And honoring those who serve, a military widow and her children get a huge surprise from a very special elf who's out to grant wishes for heroes. Stay with us. I am Santa Claus, you're watching F.A. Live. Merry Christmas! Time to get back to our gifts to you. Oh, here, open that one. Oh, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? <gasps> of course, Military City USA. We are happy to share more about Wish for Our Heroes. The nonprofit grants wishes all year long. And this time of year, we get to tag along for some special holiday wishes with a very special elf making the deliveries. Each Christmas we go to the local military bases and we ask if, if there are any families that are struggling, that need help. And Adriana uh, is the name of, of the lady that we're surprising today and her husband actually passed away on November 4th. Uh, his name was David and he already had a couple health uh, conditions and then in July he contracted COVID-19 uh, COVID and he fought COVID for several months and eventually the side, the side effects from that took his life. And so now Adriana is there as a single mom uh, with four children. We have several volunteers that have gone out, uh, specifically George Hill uh, and his family, who you may know very well. This year I know my husband couldn't do it, you know, with this whole quarantine, him being in the NBA right now. So he gave it a challenge for me and my Monet team to just get together and still be able to grant wishes. We've been thinking about, you know, an idea to give back, especially during these hard times. So we thought this would be the perfect thing to do. to uh, we know you all have had a very difficult year so we wanted to stop on behalf of uh, wish for our heroes and Sam and George Hill and Robin and Gordon Hayward uh, we brought some of our friends Santa and Mrs. Claus and we just wanted to thank you uh, for your sacrifice and just let you know that uh, we're here and that you're not alone on Christmas so we brought a few things for your family hopefully kids hopefully you can figure out what to do with all this stuff I was expect like just a couple uh, presents but no nothing like this I'm grateful for having this and uh, I'm sorry I'm so emotional and uh, it's been a rough year for my kids and me all my family is in Mexico, so technically it's only me and my kids. And 
I feel loved for you guys. And thank you very much. Still ahead on SA Live, a church on the far southwest side turns into a drive-in service complete with soulful music. We get a performance tonight from their choir. Next, pull off a homemade holiday meal for less than $50. We're taking you to a Hill Country road trip for some tips from the sauce experts. Hi, I'm Stephanie Cerna. And I'm Mark Austin from GMSA. And we wanted to wish you guys a happy holidays. And a happy new year. And can we take a nap now? <laughs> Welcome back to SA Live's Christmas Show. You know, the Texas Hill Country could very well be the perfect winter getaway. But where to? Ah. <gasps> Fisher and Weezer. That's a perfect gift. So enjoy this holiday recipe straight from their Doss Peach House kitchen in Fredericksburg. It's known as the most Christmassy town in all of Texas, with a German twist, small town shops, and plenty of wine. At Doss Peach House, we welcome families and pets. And you can come out here, as you can see, it's very wide open spaces. We allow for social distancing. They're known for those signature sauces. Tonight, we learn an easy holiday recipe. This holiday season, a lot of people will be hosting that maybe aren't used to hosting. So today we're getting help from Deanna with Fisher and Weezer. And you have a recipe that is $50 maybe or less? Yes, a really simple recipe. And so so we put together a beautiful meal that can be done in under two hours. We have a pork tenderloin wrapped in bacon, which we will be putting our wonderful cherry pomegranate habanero sauce on to glaze it. And then we have um, mashed potatoes. Everybody loves mashed potatoes, but we're spicing that up with our toasted garlic horseradish dip. Time to get started. Hope you're hungry. So I'm going to ask you, Jen, we, you see we've laid our bacon out here really nice. And if you would like, would you please roll this up? It's real simple. You just do like that. Easy enough. So you have the bacon here. Right. And it's pretty. It is and see, pretty. this is kind of fun because we wanted to make something that was elegant. People are doing things differently. Let's just put a few in here. The thing I love about y'all's recipes is they always, they look great, but you know, you can just spend a little and still get a lot out That's of it. right. Okay. And now that we have all the toothpicks in, good job on that. We just will pick this up and lay it on our baking dish and go ahead and move into the prepping the potatoes for baking. So, Jen, all you do is sprinkle a little olive oil on those, you know, plain raw potatoes and then a little garlic salt. Yeah. Wrap it up in the tin foil. Now, when you have those all wrapped up, they're ready to go in the oven at the same time as our beautiful pork tenderloin and it's going to be at 375 for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, Jen, we're done. Now, we've, what we've done here with our beautiful pork is we got it out of the oven and we left it in the foil for a little bit and we just poured the cherry pomegranate habanero over it and we let it sit to let it rest and while that is rest was resting now it's time to go ahead and prepare the mashed potatoes and that looks beautiful and it smells amazing so let's get our potatoes going so I see we left one here but this is how easy it is right it's that easy then you just add a little cream a lot of people have their own mashed potatoes potato recipe. So we we use cream, we use butter. Then we add salt and pepper to taste. And the secret ingredient, Fisher & Weezer toasted garlic horseradish sauce. Um, if you have kiddos, you may want to, you know, add that after you've already got them mashed and, you know, take a portion out for the kids who may not like the horseradish. Then you just take your masher and start to mash. Now, time to plate. So we have some great little kitchen hacks for the plating of your beautiful Christmas dinner. And the first thing we are using is a biscuit cutter that we've put a little bit of olive oil on the inside. And you can simply just spoon your potatoes into this and it helps you to make a beautiful little stack that can be really the base. And then you just lift it off and you have a beautiful little potato stack. Then we are going to plate the beautiful pork tenderloin. We're going to use this and kind of prop it up on those potatoes and now would be the time to go ahead if anybody wants extra sauce you can drizzle it on here 
And then to add a little color and some Christmas fun to our plate, we have gone ahead and made some pea puree, which you just take a can of sweet peas drained and mix a little chicken broth in and you just simply pour it around your potatoes. So you've got the green going on there and it looks really pretty. The garnish is the finishing touch and we so often forget to do this. We've got the little pomegranate arils, which bring the red in and we drizzle those around on the pea puree. And then of course, fresh chives for the potatoes and a finishing garnish of any kind of um, herb, fresh herb that you like. Of course, you can get them already cut and ready to go in H-E-B. And there you have it. So many recipes are available on their website, including cocktails using their signature sauces. Head to SALive.com. The article is on the homepage. Christmas crafting challenge, less than 20 bucks with a little coaching. Let's see what we create. And next, Marbiachi Magic, this all-female group puts a twist on Christmas carols. Well, it's been a tough 2020, but we're ending the year with some holiday love. Hope you have a safe holiday season. Merry Christmas to you all from the KSAT 12 weekend crew. What would our show be without music? Yes, tonight we show you two different groups that have changed with the times to continue sharing their music. We begin with Mariachi's Las Alteñas. We've had to kind of, you know, just kind of roll with it this year, but um, we're staying positive and uh, continuing to, you know, share our music with our audiences as best as we can. It's definitely affected our business in a way just because we haven't been able to do a lot of the performances we used to be able to do. We would do a lot of shows and we would travel, um, a lot of stage performances. We've had to get used to wearing masks when we perform and a lot of Zoom uh, performances. There was a time when we were doing Zoom rehearsals just so that we could continue the momentum um, of working together. Our gift is playing music to all who listen. chocolate. Okay, over on the far southwest side, there's a church without walls that turns the Sunday services into a drive-in. For not only prayer, but the joy of song. A lot of anxiety can happen with everything that's going on, but music just kind of does something that really lifts your spirits, and especially if you start singing, you can't be sad and down when you start singing a song. This is actually my first time um, since the pandemic doing music, so I've taken this time to do my chaplaincy work. We had five acres of land that we knew that we could use, and so we decided, you know, the biggest part about church is not just the singing, it's not just the preaching, the biggest part about church is actually the fellowship of communion. 
COVID is not an obstacle. It's really created the way. centerpiece with items I find around here. They have wonderful Christmas items out here and a whole bunch of different craft items and we're going to put that all together and we're going to create an inexpensive centerpiece that you can put on your table or maybe the fireplace as well. Okay guys, let's go shopping! Ah, oh, there's what I'm looking for. We got picture frames. I have a great idea in my head. Look how cute. These are all Christmassy looking. Yet they have these all the time out here at Dollar Tree. Oh, I hope Mike can figure out what I've got in my head out here. <laughs> oh, we gotta have lights. It's not Christmas without lights. Now you guys know I love to make bows and you gotta have that wire ribbon. So look how cute this is. I'm so excited to be at the Dollar Tree today. It is one of my most favorite places to get craft supplies. If you know me, you know I love a good wreath project, and so does Fiona, so I'm excited to be partnering with her today because we've made a lot of wreaths together on air before, and I'm gonna really challenge her crafting abilities this time around. And I'm looking for a wreath base, and I found some of my favorites, which are styrofoam wreaths. So they carry these. They're about 10 inches wide and they're kind of small on their own. So I'm going to get three of them because I think they would look really good as a set of three on the wall. I'm going to see what Fiona can do. Three different ways, three different types of decorations. So let's go find some things to decorate them with. So here is another great option to wrap your wreath base with for the holidays. This is just some evergreen garland. I think we've got enough for her to make three different wreaths. We'll see what she does with it. I'm excited to find out. Thank you. 
All right, Mike. Okay. So we are going to make a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. I've got picture frames. Ooh. I've got um, garland, and I've got ribbon, and I've got berries, and it's going to kind of look like a lantern. So picture a lantern, ah. and we're going to fill it with very pretty things. Build. You can build, build. it. Build. Fiona, do you know the one thing I love making more than anything else? What? A wreath. Yes! Oh. You've made a lot of wreaths with me before, so I know you're a very talented wreath crafter, and so for today we are going to make not one, but three different wreaths. Okay. I've got plenty of fun stuff for you to work with today. I've got kind of three distinct themes in mind, but I'll see if you can catch on to kind of what I'm feeling or if you want to take it into a whole different direction. You got it. You got this. You got right? it. I okay. Do. How many are you doing? How many do you have to do? Mike. How many do no you have to do? No talking during the test. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm great. This is <laughs> How's wonderful. your lighting project? <laughs> it is going to be illuminating. <laughs> it's like threading a needle. It's just... doing. He took my inspiration and he kicked it up another level. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see how it turns out. I knew I was asking a lot of Fiona when I had her do three separate crafts, but I knew if there was anyone that could, would be up for the challenge, it was her. I gave her very little direction and she just took it and ran with it. When in doubt, like Adina says, more hot glue. Speaking of gifts, you know who's a wonderful gift to our community? Ma Harper. And she's got big plans to give back this holiday season. She is truly a gift to our community. And I know that there are so many other people that she has touched and embraced that feels that she's even more. I do not want credit for what God gave me an idea to do. I want those that carry it out for me to get the credit. She's been a blessing to me in so many ways because when I get the men and the women in and because of their background, it's hard to give them a job. And mom has hired so many of my women and given them second chances, given them a job, as well as work with me when we feed the communities. Ma Alice Harper. If you don't know the name, maybe you've seen her on Mike Rose returning the favor or Food Network's diners, drive-ins and dives recognized for her made from scratch Cajun food. But her gift, while delicious on a plate, is much more than that. She's incredible. Once you get to know Ma, um, she's your friend for life. They asked me what did I want. And all I wanted was to give to somebody who couldn't give back. But Thanksgiving, it came to me about people who pride has been snatched away. Knowing the hardships many are facing with the pandemic, Ma teams up with local ministries with her ideas to give and continue to hire people with a rough past. With this pandemic that's going on and this crazy world, she still wants to love and embrace everyone. It's because I'm the second oldest of 16. I was born and raised in New Orleans and I'm born in 1929. That was hard times, real hard times. And had God not allowed someone to help my mother with all of her kids, who knows where I would be. And I always said, if I ever lived to get grown and be on my own, I would never forget from where I came from. This Christmas, she plans to feed 100 homeless people in and around the downtown area. 
buying throws and socks as well, so they also get a Christmas gift. If you can't tell by now, her compassion is contagious. She is willing to give back to her family, her friends, and people that she doesn't know. She meets no stranger. You yourself have a lot to receive, but what are you giving? tuning in tonight. We have to give a very special big shout out to 8th Street Market up in Comfort for decorating our set. We couldn't have asked for anything prettier. Yes, absolutely incredible. So be sure to check them out. And of course, we want to thank you, of course, for sticking with us and supporting this show, which of course helps celebrate all of you out there this year because it's been a tough year for everyone. It has, but you know something together, we, uh, we try to make it special. We hope we make you smile a little bit. We have a fun time time doing this show and we're going to be here all next year as well. Yes, so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.